You remember how we started and we said the key thing here is just, just work out what A, B, and C are. Okay? Work out what A, B, and C are, and then you just slot them in and it all just sort of unfolds from there. Okay? A common mistake students make is that when they see something like this, if it isn't in the right order, they get A, B, and C wrong. Let me show you what I mean. It's very easy to rearrange this. I could have written it, for example, as 2x um, plus 3x squared equals 2. Th these are the same equation, okay? However, they don't look the same. So a lot of students will look at this and they'll say, oh, well, I'm looking for A, B, and C, and they'll just look at them in order. They'll say, I'll make that A, that B, and that's C, okay? So this is wrong for two reasons. For starters, let's have a look at A. What makes A, A? And the answer is, it's attached to x squared. Do you see that, right? The coefficient attached to x squared, that's a. It's not just the one that happens to be first on the line, okay? Because we can rearrange these however we like. Secondly, have a look at c, right? What makes c, c? Have a look. It's by itself, it's what we call the constant, which is convenient, like it's the third letter of the alphabet, that's why it's c, but c also stands for constant in this case. Now, over there, c is a constant, look at it. Like it's got no x's or anything like that, but it's not the real value of c, why not? Because it's been moved to the right It's in the wrong position. You see, this guy here, which we call general form, everything's on the left, and there's a zero on the right-hand side. Well, I don't have a zero on the right-hand side here. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to turn this into this. I'd rewrite it, that's what I would do. If I were given this question, and you, in fact, have been given some of these in the exercise, my first job is, Rewrite it properly. Let's get everything in the right spot and in the right order, and then you can use the formula, okay? That's the first thing everyone needs to know. The second thing everyone needs to know is, when you get to this point here, suppose you get to your answer, minus whatever, plus or minus whatever, okay? Am I done, okay? So I want you to write the following three phrases underneath um, this answer here back in your working, okay? The three phrases are third form, exact form, and approximate. These three phrases come up and we need to know what they mean and which one refers to what. Third form's easy to identify because third form means you've got thirds in there, right? Is this third form? Yeah. This is third form. Look, it's got square root of seven there. There's the third, so it's easy to know. This is third form, I'm done, okay? Exact form actually is another way of saying the same thing. Because what I've done is, this is the exact precise answer. I haven't like rounded off to any number of decimal places or anything like that. However, sometimes that is exactly what they want you to do. They're like, I don't know what this number is. I need to put it like on a set of axes. And I need to know, is this like bigger than three or smaller than three? Where does it go? Okay. So what you'd have to do is go to your calculator and you'd have to put in minus one minus root seven on three. You'd have to input that and you'll get a decimal out. Okay. Then you also have to put in minus one plus root seven on three. That will give you another decimal and then you would have to approximate both of them, okay? So just look carefully at what the question says. Like what, what way do they want this in and then do it accordingly, okay? All right, so those are the two things I wanted everyone to hear. I'm now gonna show anyone who's interested where this monstrous thing comes from. You don't need to know this. But the textbook does show you, there's like a little exercise that unpacks it for you. And um, I think some of you should actually see where it comes from because it's a really important mental exercise. So, if you don't want to know where it comes from, just keep on going with your questions, but do that quietly. If you do want to know where it comes from, then uh, make a little subheading, which is deriving the formula. Um, it's gonna need like seven or eight lines. Are you watching on or are you? Then let everyone else pay attention. Thank you. So here's my little subheading. Deriving the formula. Before I said that the quadratic formula and completing the square are actually very similar to each other, okay? And you can use them in exactly the same cases. 
Here's why. The quadratic formula comes from completing the square. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy here. Okay? Are you watching? Because you don't have to. Oh, okay, watch. Then let other people. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm going to take this ax squared plus bx business and I'm going to complete the square on it. Okay? But it's not easy. That's why the quadratic formula ends up looking a bit like a mess. Okay? Here's the first thing I'm going to do. All the times we completed the square, we were doing them with monic quadratics, monic quadratics. So uh, you have to turn this thing into a monic quadratic, which I don't know what it is at the moment. Okay? So in order to make a one out the front, the first thing I have to do is I have to divide everything, everything by A. Does that make sense? Because you can see, then this won't be some random number, it'll become one, right? So here's what my next line looks like. Um, the first, the x squared turns into x squared. This turns into fractions. It's a bit messy, I know, but that's why, this is the reason why the quadratic formula is a fraction because of this step, okay? Then the next thing I want to do is, uh, I have to do this completing the square business, which comes from this number here, okay? Go back to an example of where we completed the square. You remember we were always paying attention to the coefficient of x. I don't need this guy, so I'm going to kick it over here. Okay, I've subtracted it from both sides. What do I add? When I complete the square, what I add is I take this number and I do two things. What are the two things? I halve and then I square. I halve and then I square. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to halve it. Half of that is b on 2a. Yeah, you see how I've divided by 2, so that's why there's a 2 now. But you don't just halve it, you also square it. So it's b on 2a, all squared. If you add it to the left, you'd better add it to the right. Okay? Now you'll, you'll look at this and you're like, oh wow, this is, this is getting pretty tough. Well, yes, the quadratic formula does all of this work for you. By the way, you know how the quadratic formula, underneath the square root, it's got a b squared in it? This is why it has a b squared, because it's from completing the square. Okay, now what can I do? Well, this left hand side is now a square, at least that's why I added this thing, right? What's it the square of? And the answer is x plus b on 2a. If you take this thing squared and you expand it, you will land back on this line. On the right hand side, uh, I've got a bit of a mess over here, so I need to tidy this up. This is minus c on a. What's this thing when I actually square it out? What happens to the numerator? It's going to be b squared. So that's that. What about the denominator? It's going to be 2a times 2a. Watch that there's the 2 as well. So this is 4a squared. Is that all right? Now, <clears throat> I have two fractions over here, so to simplify this, my instinct is to combine them into one fraction. So, to do that, I'm going to need a common denominator, right? I'm going to need a common denominator. See how I've got 4a squared here? I can turn this into a 4a squared as well by multiplying it by something. What should I multiply by? 4a. Nailed it. So, if I multiply this by 4a, it turns into 4a squared. If you did the bottom of the fraction, I, I guess we better do the top. So, this is going to become minus... 4ac, okay? So now I can combine the two fractions on the right hand side and now this should be something familiar. Look, b squared minus 4ac, that's where it came from, okay? And it's all over 4a squared. All right, now, we've got a lot of the pieces we recognize but we're still not quite there yet. Once you complete the square, you're like, I, I don't want it squared. I just want x by itself. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That leaves you with this on the left hand side and what on the right hand side? Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now that thing is 2a when you take the square root. So actually I'm just going to do that. Now there's one step left but I think you could probably handle it on your own. The last step is the quadratic formula, okay?